Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's discipleship lesson. For the past four months now, I have been teaching a basic Bible lesson, a discipleship lesson, each Tuesday evening. We've been posting that on YouTube and Facebook. This is discipleship lessons, as we call them, to try to help uh, new believers and even non-believers to learn the Bible, but especially to help new believers to become disciples or followers of Jesus Christ to grow in their knowledge and understanding of the Word of God. And I believe it can help a new Christian, a new believer, but also somebody who's been saved for many, many years. And so that's my desire in teaching uh, these lessons. Sometimes we've taught them in our church, in Sunday school classes, small groups, and uh, preferably it's been taught one-on-one -on -one a number of times to different people and uh, just to help people to grow in the Lord, grow as a Christian. And so tonight we're coming to lesson number 17. Lesson 17 is about heaven, about heaven. The Bible actually refers to three heavens. We could refer to one as the first heaven. That's found in Genesis chapter 1, verses 8 and 10, Jeremiah 4, 25, and Daniel chapter 4 and verse 12. And this is the, the firmament that's surrounding the earth. We could refer to that as the first heaven, if you will. And then the next we could refer to as the second heaven. That's referred to in uh, Genesis 22, 17, Nehemiah 9, 23, and Psalm 19, 1. And I think for that we could refer to the entire universe. So we've got the first heaven, the, the firmament surrounding the earth, the second heaven being the entire universe. But the third heaven is the place where all children of God can look forward to someday going. And the third heaven is the dwelling place of God. The third, the third heaven is the place that we think of when we think of heaven and what we look forward to as born-again believers, that one day heaven will be our home and with, with God will be our home. This is found in 1 Kings 8, 27 and 30. It's, it's referred to as the dwelling place of God. Let me read to you what it says there. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 27 and 30. The Bible says, But... Will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heavens and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded. Then verse 30. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven, that God, they're beseeching, God, would you in heaven hear us, hear our prayers, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. So the heaven that we think of is the dwelling place of God, the third heaven. Uh, that, that's where God dwells. And of course we understand that God dwells inside born-again believers as well through the person of the Holy Spirit of God, the the third person of the Trinity. But, but heaven is the dwelling place of God. 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 4 would, would refer to the third heaven as well. And this is the place that we as Christians think of and refer to generally when we, when we say heaven. Now, what, is, what does death mean for the, for the Christian? I want to talk to you about a few things here. We'll, we'll ask a few questions and look at some answers from the scriptures. We're going to ask this question. What does death mean for the Christian? Will we know one another in heaven? What is heaven like? Who will be in heaven? And what will we do in heaven? So five questions that we're going to try to answer tonight in this very simple lesson. If you would like the handouts or the notes for this lesson, you could send me an email address. My email is uh, pastorjohnston at rogers.com. Or you could message me maybe through Facebook and I'd be glad to send you the notes for this lesson or for any of the discipleship lessons. So let's answer these five questions. Number one, what does death mean for the Christian, for the born again believer, for the one who's been saved, the child of God? What does death mean for the Christian? We'll look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verses 6 to 8. The Bible says here, therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So in this verses, the, the, these few verses, it teaches us that to be home in the body 
is to be absent from the Lord, and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, God, God made us uh, in His likeness, in His image, and we there's three parts, I believe, to our, to our being. We are body, soul, and spirit. The body, of course, is the flesh, the part of us that we see. The soul is the part of man that would include, if you will, the heart, the mind, the emotions, the will, the ability to choose, and so on. The soul is what we really are, right? And then the spirit, the spirit of God that uh, is made to fellowship with God. It's with our soul that we communicate man to man. Uh, but with our spirit, we can have enjoy fellowship with, the, with God. And the spirit of God comes to dwell inside believers. We've talked about that in a different, uh, different lesson. But the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I believe that when a, when a person dies, when a believer dies, yes, they may take that body and they may put that body in a casket. They may bury that body in the ground. The body... Uh, uh, rots away and becomes dust again, just as God formed us from the dust of the earth. But the soul of man and the spirit of man is separated from the body at death. And though the, the, the body may be buried in, 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 the, in a grave, I believe the soul of man uh, goes to be with the Lord, to be present uh, with the Lord. For those that have been have been saved. Look at what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 23 and 24. God's word says this. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having, having, having in a, a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul, Paul writing to, to the Philippians says... You know, I, I'm, in, I, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I'm in a straight betwixt two. He says, I would love to just uh, go and, and, and be with the Lord. Uh, I, he says, I love that. But also for me to be here in the body and to be with you and to be with people that I love and teach the people that I love and, and, and care for you and, 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 and so on, help you to know the Lord better. He says, I like that as well. So I'm in a tough place. I would love to go and be with the Lord. I'd love uh, to right away be, be uh, taken away. But here he refers to this. Uh, distinction of to be in the again to be in the body present means he's absent from the Lord but to be in the presence of the Lord means to be absent uh, from the body Paul is saying that when he departs from his body or when he departs from his flesh he will be with Christ he will be with the Lord Jesus Christ this teaches us that when a Christian dies his soul is immediately transported to heaven and the body returns to the grave, uh, awaiting its resurrection one day. Revelation chapter 6, 9 through 11, tells us that the souls of martyred believers, they're with the Lord. They're with the Lord today. Uh, Luke 16, 22, together with Matthew chapter 8 and verse 11, would indicate that when Lazarus died, when Lazarus uh, passed away, as we say, he was transported by angels into heaven. Now, not bodily, but, but his soul. His soul. Uh, there, there is, there's no scriptural truth to any such teaching, such as you know, purgatory or reincarnation. Uh, those things are not in the scriptures. Those things are not in the word of God. And so we cannot put confidence in, in some of those uh, doctrines, if you will, that are taught by some religions or some churches. We've got to base what we, what we believe and teach on the Bible. And what does God's word say? And the Bible doesn't refer to those places. So when we, when we die, we're absent from the body and we're either present with the Lord in heaven where God dwells or we're separated from God and our soul goes to hell. Our soul goes to hell. And Luke 16, of course, tells a, a powerful story uh, about that. The born again child of God does not need to fear death because he's on his way to heaven. You and I who are saved, we're, we're in Christ Jesus. Christ dwells in us. We don't have to fear death because we can know for sure that we are on our way to heaven. When we die, our soul will be separated from the body, absent from the body, but present with the Lord. Let's look at our second question. Will we know one another in heaven? Will we know one another in heaven? We're going to look to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
1 Corinthians chapter number 15, and beginning there in verse 35. 1 Corinthians 15, 35. The Bible indicates that we, we will recognize each other in heaven. We'll recognize each other in, in eternity. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 35 to 53. It says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that that which thou sowest is not uh, quickened, made alive, except it die. First be planted, first be planted in the ground. And then one day quickened, made alive, resurrected. It says in verse 37, and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of, uh, of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one a glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. We're going to, we, we, we lose this corruptible body one day to receive an incorruptible body. It says it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam, uh, referring to Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is of the uh, is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, of Christ Jesus. Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh, uh, sorry, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immor immortality. We will one day, at the, at the rapture, at the rapture, we will receive a new glorified body. We live now in a corruptible body that uh, gets old, doesn't it? It begins to get sick. It begins to sag. It begins to do a lot of things. It's a corruptible body. And one day we will receive a, a glorified body, a new body at the rapture. This is the moment when the Lord will come in the air and all believers will be, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. In heaven, we will all have glorified bodies. The, the best way for us to understand what this will look like is to consider the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection from the dead in his glorified body. Notice, notice a few things about that. The, 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 the resurrected body of Christ, the glorified body of Christ, uh, after he died and was buried and, and, and rose again, he then would appear to the disciples and so on in a glorified body. And that is what we also shall have one day in, in heaven. John chapter 20 and verse number 20. We'll see a few things about what was Jesus like in his glorified body. John chapter 20 and verse 20. Was he recognizable? Was, was Jesus recognizable in his glorified body? Well, the scripture says, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Uh, Jesus, when he appeared to the disciples, he, he showed them and, and showed them his body. And they uh, remember Thomas, he he. You know, saw the 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 scars from the nails and so on. He saw where the spear had gone into the side, and so he received a new body, a glorified body. But yet, he was still recognizable to the disciples. 
what else? Was he touchable? Was he, was he touchable? John chapter 20 and verse 27 says, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and, uh, and re reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. He, he was able to, that Thomas could reach out and, and touch the Lord in his glorified body, in his resurrected body. John chapter 20 and verse 19 says this, John 20, 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Was he physically restricted? No. It was a place where the, the doors were all barred shut because of the disciples' fear of the Jews, that they might come after them as well. But Jesus appeared unto them in the place where they were. So there wasn't any restrictions, if you will, to the, the travel of Jesus Christ in his glorified body, that he was able to just appear to them uh, in that place where they were assembled uh, together. And also Luke 24, uh, Luke 24, verse 31. We can see this as well, Luke 24, 31. It says, and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he, and he vanished out of their sight. Again, in the glorified body, he could just vanish from their sight. He could appear in their sight. He didn't, he didn't knock on the door and come through the door in, in the normal way that someone with restrictions to this earthly body would have to do. Uh, you and I can't just, you know, whoosh, uh, you know, beam me up, Scotty, travel from one area to another. But, but there was no limitations on the resurrected, glorified body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that's what it'll be like for us in our resurrected body, in our uh, incorruptible body, in our glorified body one day in heaven. Uh, what else? Philippians 3 and verse uh, Philippians 3 and verse 21, we see that Christ gives us a glorified body at the rapture. Christ gives us a glorified body at the rapture. The Bible says, who shall change our vile body? Referring to Christ, verse 20, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his, the Lord Jesus Christ, unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And then one more reference here, 1 John, not the Gospel of John, but, but later 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So what does death mean for the Christian? Well, it means we're, we, we're, our soul is separated from the body, but to be absent from the body means to be in the presence of the Lord. We can know that if we are born again believers, uh, genuinely saved, then when we die, our soul is separated from the body that they bury in the grave, and our soul goes to be with the Lord in the presence of God, in, in the third heaven, to the place where God dwells. Will we, know one an, or will we know one another in heaven? Will we recognize one another in heaven? And I believe that yes, yes, we will. Third, third question, what is heaven like? What is heaven like? Let's just read a, a few verses to describe a little bit. God doesn't give us all the details of what heaven will be like, but there are some verses that we can read that describe for us a little bit of what heaven will be like. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9, the Bible says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Our, our, our blank here in the notes. According to this verse, is it possible to adequately describe heaven? No, it's not. Uh, I had not seen, their ear heard, neither even entered into the heart of man the things which God hath uh, prepared for them. We can't even begin to fully imagine just how wonderful heaven will be. So can we adequately describe it? No, we, no, we can't. According to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24, Hebrews 9, 24, the very presence of God is in heaven. The very presence of God is in heaven. Hebrews 9 and verse 24 says this, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth. He's not just Jesus Christ today. He's not just 
uh, in the place that was made with hands, the you know, a temple or a tabernacle, something like that, which were just figures or representative of what would one day be. But it says, but he, but into heaven, into heaven itself. Today and at that time, Christ had he had entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God, God the Father, uh, for us. So according to Hebrews 9.24, the very presence of God is in heaven. Again, it's the dwelling place of God. It's where God the Father lives. God dwells in us through the person of the Holy Spirit of God, but God the Father dwells in heaven. The earth is his footstool. Uh, praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. We won't read that now, but it describes God's throne that is located in heaven. Revelation 4 describes God's throne that is located in heaven. We'll look at Revelation 21. Revelation chapter number 21. And it's the last book of the Bible. It tells us a lot of prophetic things towards the future and speaks some about heaven. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 4. Let me read that to you. The Bible says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. It's describing what heaven's going to be like. And so the few blanks there in our notes, there will be no more death in heaven. Praise God for that. No more death in heaven. No more, no more sickness in heaven. No more, no more cancer in heaven. No more COVID in heaven. Praise God. There'll be no more death in heaven. There'll be no more sorrow in heaven. No more heartaches in heaven. There'll be, uh, there'll be no more crying in heaven. No more tears. No more crying in heaven. Uh, there'll be no more pain in heaven. No more pain. Now, there's going to come a day, the Bible says, where God will wipe away all the tears from our eyes and there'll be no more crying, no more sorrow, uh, no more pain, no more death. Thank God for heaven, for heaven. Revelation 21 and verse 22. Revelation 21, 22, the Bible says this. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, are the temple of it. In our, in our notes here, there will be no more temple in heaven. No more temple in heaven because we will be in God's presence. In the Old Testament times, they, would, they had the tabernacle, they had the temple, and it was in the, the Holy of Holies, the innermost part of the temple and so on, that to them, the, the mercy seat there and so on, it, it represented the place where the, the, the Shekinah glory was and the presence of God dwelt and so on. But God dwells in heaven and one day we will be in the very presence of God, all born again believers. And so there's no need for a temple in heaven. Revelation 21 and verse 23 says this, And the city had no need of, no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did, did, light, did lighten it or light it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. In our notes here, there will be no more sun or moon in heaven. No more need for the sun, no more need for the moon, because Jesus Christ is the light of heaven. Jesus is the light of heaven. Revelation 22 and verse 3. Revelation 22 and verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. In our, the blank in our notes, there will be no more curse in heaven. There will be no more curse in heaven. Thank God for that. No more curse. There has been a, a curse upon this earth even since, right, the Garden of Eden and when man sinned and, and, and the, or the curse came upon this earth. There'll be no more curse in heaven. Revelation 22 and verse 5. Revelation 22, 5. And there shall be no more night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Our blank in our notes is this. There will be no more night in heaven. It'll be an eternal, eternal daytime. There'll be no more night in heaven. No need, no need to sleep. No need to rest. Uh, there'll be no more night in heaven. Turn with me to uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 10. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 10 and verse 16. We'll read those. God's word says this, For he looked for a city 
which have foundations, whose builder and maker is God. This is referring to Abraham. Verse 16 now, Hebrews eleven sixteen 16. It says, But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly, heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. God hath prepared for them a city. Second uh, Corinthians 12, 2 to 4. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Revelation chapters 21 and 22 are more uh, passages that you could read that would describe for you a little bit about what heaven is like. But again, it's indescribable for us. It, we, we cannot even adequately describe. We can begin to share some of the things that the scripture tells us, but we cannot adequ adequately describe how beautiful heaven will be and how glorious it will be to be in the presence of, of our God, our Creator, our Heavenly Father, and His Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we've answered these questions so far. What does death mean for the Christian? Well, to be absent from the body means to be in the very presence of the Lord. Will we know one another in heaven or recognize one another in heaven? I believe, yes, we will. What is heaven like? It's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place. And it's where God is. And that's where I want to be. Question number four, who will be in heaven? Who will be in heaven? Revelation chapter 21 and verse number 27. Let me read that to you. Revelation 21, 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it or enter into heaven. And there shall in no wise enter it, into it uh, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. No, no sin will be allowed into heaven. That means that because we're all sinners, none of us would be allowed into heaven unless our sins were washed away. You know, thank God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, through God's gift of salvation, through the Lord's mercy and pardon and grace and so on, God is willing to spare us from hell and the lake of fire, and He's willing to offer us eternal life and a home in heaven where we can be with Him, where we can be with our God, our Creator, and, and our Savior. The Bible says that the only ones that will, be, that will enter into heaven are those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life because the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. He is the Lamb of God who came down to earth and offered His life as a sacrifice. Uh, he was slain for our sins. He was killed because of our sins. He was crucified on the cross of Calvary and His blood was shed to pay the penalty for our sins, for my sins and for your sins. Who's going to be in heaven? Only those who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Lamb of God, who died on the cross for their sins, paid the penalty for their sins, and who by faith are willing to trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone. To put their faith completely in Jesus Christ. Not trusting religion. Not trusting their good works. Not trusting anything else to somehow uh, merit favor with God or earn their way to heaven. You know, we've got to admit and recognize our sinfulness and our need for the Savior, our need for Jesus Christ. God would have never had to send His Son, Jesus Christ, down into the world to die for our sins if, if we did not need a Savior. Or if there was some other way for us to get to heaven, there'd be no need for God to send His Son to come and die on the cross. He could have stayed on the throne in heaven. But God sent Jesus to die for your sins and for my sins so that we could be saved and have eternal life and be able to spend eternity in heaven with God, with our Creator, and with His Son, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is He your personal Savior? If you've never trusted Jesus Christ, uh, I, I urge you to turn to Jesus Christ. Admit your sinfulness. Acknowledge your sinful, lost condition. The Bible says we're lost. Uh, we are separated from God by our sin. We are all, all sinners who need the Savior. And our only hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I hope and pray. 
that you will turn to him. If, if, if you are not sure how to do so, or you'd like me to show you more from the Bible, but how you could be saved, how you could be born again, how you can know for sure that you'll spend eternity in heaven and be with God, and be with your other loved ones or relatives or family members who were saved, who were believers in Jesus Christ, who were born again, then you, you need to learn what the Bible teaches and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd love to show you how. Uh, reach out to me. Message me through Facebook. Uh, call me. Email me. My, my cell phone number is 416-300-0735. My email address is pastorjohnston at rogers.com. I'd love to somehow be able to meet you or message you through, through the internet if you live someplace else and, and show you from the Bible how you can know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And then know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. That when you die, it's just your body that's in the grave and your soul that's separate from the body goes to heaven to be in the presence of the Lord, to be in the presence of God, rather than your soul being separated from your body and going to hell. And then ultimately one day judged for your sin and cast in the lake of fire and separated from God for eternity. The choice is yours. God gives man a free will, a free choice. He made salvation possible. He made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins. The Son of God became the Lamb of God and died for us for our sins. And it's your choice whether you'll believe on Him and receive Him as your personal Savior or not. The Bible tells us this. He gave this promise to his disciples, to his disciples, to those that were believers and followers of Christ. He says this in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus speaking. You believe in God the Father, believe also in me. In my Father's house. Well, what's God's house? What's God's dwelling place? Heaven, right? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so Jesus Christ is our way. Our way, the one and only way for you to be able to go to heaven. You won't get to heaven your own way or somebody else's way or some religion's way. You've got to go Jesus' way. And that is through faith, trusting Jesus Christ alone as your personal Savior. So who will be in heaven? Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I, I wish we could say, well, everybody will be in heaven, but that would be a lie. That's not true. Many people will be in hell, sadly, and will spend eternity in the lake of fire being judged for their sins. The Bible teaches us that broad is the way. Uh, broad is the way to destruction. Broad is the road to destruction. Narrow is the way. The path to e eternal life. Narrow is the way to eternal life. Very sadly, many are on their way to hell. Because they're rejecting Christ. They're rejecting the Lamb of God. They're rejecting God in their life. Won't you come to Jesus Christ today and be saved? You don't have to you fear, fear them. You don't have to fear death. You don't have to fear dying. You can one day know that when you do pass away, you pass on from this life, your soul will be separated from your body and go immediately to be in the presence of God. Absent from the body, but, but in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of God. Would you trust Jesus? Who will be in heaven? Those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And then the last question tonight, what will we do in heaven? What will we do in heaven? Well, according to Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 9, the redeemed of all the ages will sing a new song. Will sing a new song. Revelation chapter number 5 and verse... Number nine, let me read it to you. God's word says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God, God the Father, God our Creator, by thy blood. Jesus Christ is the one who has redeemed us to God. It says, By thy blood, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every people, out of every nation, 
people who speak all different languages, people out of every different tribe, every different nation, every different clan, every different group of people upon the earth, every race of people, every every you know every every group of people, every one that speaks every language. God's gift of salvation is such that it is for every uh, nation. It's for all people everywhere. It's for all who will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day we'll sing a new song. We'll sing a song of praise and we'll sing songs of adoration and we'll sing songs of, of thanksgiving and we'll sing songs to our, our, to our Lord Jesus Christ, to the Lamb of God and to uh, our, our Creator God. In heaven, we will serve God continually. We will serve God continually. Look at what Revelation says in chapter 7 and verse 15. Revelation 7, 15. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3 and 5, God's word says this, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 5, and there shall be no more, uh, sorry, there be, shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. We will reign with him. We will serve him. We will serve God continually. In heaven, what else? We will fellowship continually. We will fellowship continually. According to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21, we will sit with Christ at his throne. We will sit with Christ at his throne. Revelation 3.21 says this. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. In heaven we will enjoy fellowship with the Lord, fellowship with Christ continually. What a wonderful time it will be. What a wonderful time it will be. If we could just sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and learn from the master teacher, that enough would make heaven wonderful. How wonderful heaven will be. Can you imagine having the chance to sit down at Christ's feet, to fellowship with him, and maybe even to have him tell us why. Tell us some of the whys. To explain to us some things that maybe we never understood down here. Maybe some things from the scriptures that just were hard to understand and one day he can explain it all to us. Maybe some of the things you went through in life, the trials of life, some of the valleys that you walked through and, and you knew down here, you, you sensed the presence of, of the shepherd, the good shepherd, Lord Jesus Christ. You, you sensed that he, he was with you and he walked through you through the valley of the shadow of death like the psalmist David talked about. But one day to maybe have the Lord explain to you a little bit more about the why for some of the trials and what the Lord was trying to do in our lives to perfect us and mature us and make us more like Christ. Just to be able to fellowship with Christ, to sit at his feet, to worship him, to sing praises to him, to hear him teach us. Uh, what a wonderful time that will truly be. And we won't desire anything else up there than to be able to sit at his feet and to serve, serve the Lord. I would sure rather spend eternity with my Lord with my Savior, with my God and Creator, than to spend eternity separated from God in a place of punishment, the lake of fire. Uh, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I hope you do. And if you don't, would you please turn to Jesus Christ? Trust Him as your personal Savior. Again, I mentioned it a few minutes ago, but my cell phone number is 416-300-0735. You could call me reach out to me. I'd be glad if you live, live in our area to, to meet you, to sit down with you and share with you the gospel, to show you what the Bible says about heaven and salvation, how you can be forgiven of your sins, how you can have eternal life, to explain that to you better if you don't understand it fully. And uh, you can also reach out to me by email. My email address is pastorjohnston at rogers.com. Send me a note, ask me questions. Uh, if you want the, the, the notes for this or other lessons, feel free to ask for that as well. It's my privilege to be the pastor of Gospel Light Baptist Church in Richmond Hill, Ontario. And uh, you can find us uh, on the internet. Our church website is GLBC, standing for Gospel Light Baptist Church, GLBC, YorkRegion.com. 
And uh, you can learn more about our church and uh, the times of our services and so on. We'd love to have you visit us sometime if you're not already part of a, of a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, gospel-preaching church. Thank you so much for listening tonight. Have a good day.